A little bit of controversy today. Uh, Jack Kirby swiped one of his greatest creations, and we're going to talk about that. But I want to welcome you guys to the your favorite comic book YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to get into all of that in a second. But first, got to let you guys know that Jimmy and I are going to be going to Heroes Con. We look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. There, we're bringing all of our stuff, man. We're going to get a big-ass soccer mom van to take down there so that we can fit everything in there. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys. Make sure you rock your cartoonist kayfabe shirts. Fly the flags high. Also, at the end of July, last Saturday of July to be specific, is Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. This is an initiative that Jimmy and I have put together where we are uh, dumping a whole bunch of comics on the population of the United States. The way that we're doing that is by taking a bunch of our comps and a bunch of our comic book doubles, things that we already have, and uh, we're going to supply the free little lending libraries around town with uh, stacks and heaps of comics. We encourage you to do the same. We did this uh, same deal last year. So many of you, thousands of you, uh, showed up and hashtagged us in uh, your dissemination of comics. We want that same thing this time, man. We're going to retweet you. We're going to reshare uh, those posts because we're very, very excited to uh, put comics out there into the universe and uh, potentially generate new comic book readership. So today, man, we're going to look through uh, Prince Valiant Volume 1, the, the genesis period of, uh, of the Prince Valiant strips. But the thing that we're going to celebrate uh, today, man, the, the way that we get the viewer to take a look at uh, said video is to look at one of the most famous sequences in Prince Valiant because of uh, what Jack Kirby homaged from it some some years later it begins on this page here when uh there is this like mean old ogre who has taken over this this one castle uh who welcome death death enter uh this this ogre and his team of people like they bolster fear in the hearts of men so they're already kind of like radicalized with the idea of the supernatural and it's Prince Valiant's idea that if they're already, they already believe the hype of demons and ogres and shit existing, well, I'm going to scare the fuck out of them. I'm going to do my own psyop. And it requires this goose right here as uh, Prince Valiant sort of looms closer to uh, the castle. He pops his ass into that castle and then we see him gutting that bird a little bit. Hal Foster is a very literal artist. So he's taking that goose. He's cutting off the quills from, from the feathers. Going to make some fangs. <laughs> he's going to take them talons. And he's going to make some ears. But this is the image, right? Like, that's clearly Etrigan the demon. And even you see those lines at the top and like that go across. Like, that's built into the Jack Kirby demon design. Now, this is a goose body. I ask you, where's the asshole? Like, is that the mouth? Is that one of the eyes? Is that is that what he put his neck into? The asshole is incorporated in the design, but Hal Foster is a classy fella, so right. he, ain't, he ain't telling you. Now he, <laughs> You have to take some liberties if you're going to make your own goose flesh mask at home. But check this out, dude, because, like, the you always see this image, you see this image, you see this image often, but... There are lots of side views, and with that literal fucking Hal Foster artwork, the gooseneck is always visible. It's really cool looking. It's almost like a ponytail or something in most yeah. of those drawings. Yeah, you always see it. Look at the body language, you know? That body language is uncanny like Jack Kirby's demon. Yeah. It's weird to think that that's something that you would also take. What an impression this character must have made on a young Kirby. Three weeks of strips. You know, just a th just a three week cycle, and that was the cool thing about Hal Foster is like he'd be he'd be one and done. He'd be into something and out of it really really quickly. But here he is. He he strikes fear into the main ogre guy and actually kills him. He dies of fright. So then uh, he becomes kind of a legendary figure within the castle walls and kind of terrorizes people. The way that he sort of lives in his joint he just sleeps inside of like a big curtain that has is kind of like dangling somewhere uh great uplighting on our guy here 
Yeah, this is a spectacular panel. I mean, that's 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 a splash page in a comic book. And he successfully scares everybody out of the castle. <laughs> that's that. Getting rid of that filthy uh, goose skin. So let's do our anatomy. So there's the head, and then it would come back. Like, I think that is a blown-out asshole mouth. Yeah, that's... Uh... Wonder if how Foster's laughing about that. <laughs> Is he's thinking carefully, how does this mask and anatomy line up? Well, like you know, you feel dressed a deer one or two times, no? I have, yeah. So you actually gotta cut the asshole out, right? So it's just like uh where the butthole was. Now, we've gotten out of the controversy, man. Like and we got you guys to uh to click the thing, man. So we're actually gonna do a how foster vid. I do think it's worth dwelling for a moment just on the idea of like the impact this has on a young Jack Kirby. Totally. Because it's years and years later that he does it, and I can't imagine that he's rereading how foster and going, Oh yeah, you know what? This is a perfect thing. Like this is something he saw as a kid. Did he do you know if he ever talked about this character? Uh you know, the origins of this character? Because you wonder, if, is this one of those things where like we all see stuff and then it gets into our work and then someone goes, hey, did you swipe this artist? And it's like, no, what are you talking about? And right. you see it and go, oh, shit, did I swipe this artist? Because <laughs> it's exactly the thing. But it's the impression. Like this had to be such a, I mean, we know the impact how Foster has on history of comics. He's one of the huge influences coming out of these Sunday pages. And you know Jack Kirby's reading this stuff as a young, young aspiring artist. Like totally. it just has to be burnt into his psyche and this image in particular, this awful, grotesque monster. It's the truth, too, because, uh, you know, what what reprints were out there, and, and you never see Jack Kirby's bookshelves, right. right? So, like, there were certainly the Nostalgia Press, like Woody Gelman, Prince Valiant reprints. Those are probably the ones that were at your library when right. you were a kid or something. Uh, but before that, I just don't know. Like, like you know, was this just like kind of out in the ether? I do think more people collected the tear sheets than, than we probably think mm -hmm. because imagine seeing this at oh, a broadsheet size how could you throw that away each week but that'd be a beautiful thing to grab a couple tear sheets because it's probably something that's more affordable than like you know we see people that have like rare bit fiends or something you know like some old old like early 1900s at this point these are somewhat collectible like you can probably find these at a reasonable price and get one or two of them throw them on your wall it'd look great i'm on a uh Prince, Prince Valiant rabbit hole lately, man. I, I, actually, a, a comic strip rabbit hole. So we're going to look through uh, some more Hal Foster and and share a bunch of that stuff. But Kirby wasn't the only guy to swipe from the great Hal Foster. This episode is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Three different levels will give you access to our videos before anyone else sees them to give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. And at the King K. Faber level, you actually sit in on our recording sessions. This episode is also brought to you by the books that we make. You see our bibliography in front of you right now. In addition to all of these books, Ed Piscor's Red Room Crypto Killers, the new season of Red Room is now out. Issue one is available now. Issue two cover here. There are also a clip of variant covers by Ed, Peach Momoko, me, and many other great artists. The other big book that Ed is releasing later this year, Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus, collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree strips in one handsome 500 plus page volume, including over 100 pages of new material. That'll be out in time for the holidays. Got to pre-order it now so Fanographics knows how many to print. There's also an Omnibus collection of X-Men Grand Design coming out later this year. Again, pre-order that one today. Let them know how many you need because some of the X-Men Grand Design three volumes are out of print. So get that one big handsome collected volume. My next big book later this summer, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. This is available for pre-order now. Collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Also available and back in print from Image Comics. You can also pick up my Hulk Grand Design with the fluorescent green cover. You cannot miss it. As well as Plain Janes, the first young adult graphic novel. And now back to our program. Uh, before Prince Valiant... How Foster was drawing uh, the Tarzan strip, and this is your like you know Lord Grey Stoke before he, you know, wiles out and starts living in the in the jungle. Big influence on the Siegel Schuster jib of uh, Superman. There is your Kirby Etrigan the Demon. These are the guys J C Lydecker, uh, who um, How Foster was like riffing on developed his style from like the great illustrators of the 1800s 
Uh, we see a, believe it or not, man, Bob Kane might have swiped a, a time or two. You know what's amazing, too, with the Etrigan design are the ears. You know, like right. even down to the ears, the detail is consistent. Totally. Uh, here's some Frazetta. We recently looked at the uh, Frazetta Living Legend monograph that he produced himself, and it had the uh, a Thunder story, Thunder the Barbarian or whatever. Uh, this is the image from that, and this is the original Hal Foster piece, Hal Foster uh, Tarzan piece with... Uh, a Frazetta Tarzan painting. Yeah, there's a Wally Wood of that one too, by the way. Yes. <laughs> that, that that one has probably been swiped. There might be a couple others too in between. There. Oh, yeah. This is a funny one, man. First off, this strip, I posted that, this on Kayfabe, but it's like a four or five panel fight scene mm -hmm. that ends with this guy getting put in some kind of like weird leg lock. But uh, Shelly Moldoff did the crib in here for a Hawkman. And that's a short, you know, that's a, this is his shorts on his foreleg, and he kept that line. You see? Yeah, I do. That, that's pretty <laughs> good. You know, that leg lock probably goes back to Frank Gotch. Right. And, uh, what's his name? Uh, who did he wrestle? It's like the most famous match. Hank and Schmidt. Oh, yeah, George Hank and Schmidt. Yeah, uh, because it was a leg lock is what Gotch would use. And, and you know, famously, uh, Hank and Schmidt had his knee, like, twisted before the match. But it's it's kind of interesting how that stuff all ties together. Check out this old um, Tarzan panel that Foster put together. And below is an Alex Raymond uh, Flash Gordon piece. And one of the noteworthy th things is um, the lack of depth. And this, this is one of the... Th this is like what Jeff Darrow does so well. This is what Hal Foster does so well. Is like the depth is contingent on like the size of the guys in the background. And it's hard to freaking draw small dudes... And you see that, like, the bigger you draw them, the less yeah, of depth of field there, there, there is, man. So that, I always think that's something Mobius is really kind of, kind of brought too. back to the uh, Western he, comics. Maybe, you know, in the 90s, you start to see guys like Frank Quitely putting that on the page. Howard Pyle is a guy who's, whose name comes up a lot in conversation. And uh, this is, this is that sphere of influence, right? Like, how Foster didn't invent everything. He used a little bit of uh, inspiration. It ain't one for one like these shits. But... You know, it's there. Probably the most famous image. I think Al Williamson owned this page. Wow. And may and may may still, you know, in the estate, own that piece. It's so, funny the Batman thing. If you go back one page, whenever we were looking right. at this, I was thinking so much of this being like a real Batman kind of, you know, scaring the uh, the criminals or a cowardly lot kind of. How how idea. cool is this shit, man? It's thirty seven. This is before the comic book is invented, and it really is a complete epic. Um, when you get started with Prince Valiant comics, it's this very 12 panel grid, a lot of sameness, a lot of, a lot of, uh, busyness, a lot of stuff going on in these pages. I think he did the first four pages kind of on spec to, to sort of sell his, his own idea. He was coming off the Tarzan stuff. It wasn't creatively fulfilling. And he's a weird cartoonist, Hal Foster, like, like, uh. He, like is he a cartoonist like he, he bristles at that notion at that idea he's working within the genre but you see there's no dialogue bubbles like like he's he fancies himself an illustrator who's kind of moonlighting the problem was man that the ego is a is a very it's a, it's a very f fickle thing man and when the fan mail started to come in he kept going very interesting build at the beginning you don't see young prince valiant for about four strips he's just kind of like mentioned and then when you see him, he starts doing things. Oh, here's that here's that uh, image that mm -hmm. uh, Frazetta Frazetta cribbed from from uh, early on. Um, it doesn't take long before he starts getting more and more ornate with the background details and things, with the storytelling. His word choice is pretty fantastic. Uh, imagine drawing horses like uh, you know nine ten horses a, a page every week. I think he, these would take him about. 70 hours per week. Once again, speaking to his literal kind of mentality, like uh, this is a dragon, you know, just like a big giant crocodile. You see versions of this in even Game, Game of Thrones where there are these people, these magicians, but it's really chemistry. Do you know if he colored, was he doing color guides for this? Yes. Yeah, the color was uh, very important to him and he set up the guides uh, himself for a long time. Um, the beauty of these strip books is that the the 
front matter and the back matter are as important as the comics and gives you a lot of insight. The other beauty is like the quality of reproduction here is so nice. Yeah. You mentioned those like old library editions that I would see. They did not look like this. It's true. Here are some examples. Um, Kim Thompson, rest in peace, man, kind of doing his spin on uh, the, the various editions that existed. Uh, the editions that Fantagraphics did in the 80s come from some maybe French, French or Scandinavian reprint that was done with, you know, 20 like 20th century Ben Day standard comic book color that's like represented here you know this is, might be like a French these are the various versions of the old stuff and he's just illustrating how they got hold of like the guides and were able to to use modern scanning and stuff to 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 give you a better version of uh of the uh, of the strip this is i mean this is absolutely the best that you can get your hands on, you know they, That's they really. That's a great vertical. Oh, it's so it's good. Such a good. You, piece. F you, f you feel it, right? You totally feel that that height. Look at this shit, Jimmy. The yeah. depth. It's a two-page spread, <laughs> and just so considerate. There's so much subtlety that happens. Uh, sometimes there will be a maiden who's leaning against a wall, and you see the tension of her hair, kind of pushing against the wall and looking in an interesting way. He doesn't have codified iconography for like what his noses look like or what his ears look like. It's all contingent on the lighting of the situation. Hmm, go back one. You think that, I mean, this, these are famous comics, right? You think this is a reference that we see in Spawn, the Dave Sim Spawn issue? <laughs> um, I don't, because I just don't, I just don't see McFarlane being literate at comics at, at that kind of level. But I, I mean, the composition is there. I mean, I, I don't know if Dave Sim didn't do the compositions for a lot of that that issue. That's fair. And it, I would think Dave Sim is a comics somewhat a... Uh, th yeah. This is just... I always think of it just because, like I always say, in my library there was Garfield and Prince Valiant. Right. That's what you had in, in my library growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man. Maybe, maybe Dave Sim showed this to McFarlane. I know that he's very stingy about, you write the fucking thing, I'll draw the fucking thing. That's true. But uh, why wouldn't Dave Sim give him some stuff? Look at this. Look at this square as courtship of the of the you know victor medieval period dude gonna go outside a girl's house and play your loot you get and take it to the fucking who scow right then man you fucking stalker um is there is the writing i've never read these is it pulpy because it would have been that era there's purpleness to it absolutely but the turn of phrase can be badass at times yeah. man um this is another example of like the literalness that uh that uh how foster brings into it where morgan Le Fay, she is poisoning she's drugging uh prince valiant and he's seeing these visions you know this is when using color, color holds. Hold, yeah um but they also weave that as like spells like she's she's creating potions and stuff but you and i would know that to be fucking roofies or something merlin shows up like these all, all of the, uh, you know, the badasses of Arthurian legend are there. Look at these kind of color holds, and you see clear, like, brush strokes and things. Massive, massive, massive amounts of craft. Look at these aliens. Bizarre color there, too. Yeah. Yeah, because he's flipping the script, and, and uh, you know, he dose, he's dosing her up with, you know, he spit it out or whatever. Um, there's that Al Williamson-owned page. That's an amazing panel. Foster knows where to leave the negative space. Yeah, I've know? been enjoying that in the flip through because uh, it is like a uh, unique to Prince Valiant challenge. Yeah, here goes here goes a wrestling match <laughs> with the uh, look at that toehold man, like just emasculating or big guy, <laughs> you know, just making him a bitch. But he, sitting the way he's sitting right there, don't need much emasculation. <clears throat> no. It's so funny. That guy would have been a perfect extra for like he's doing a wrestling picture after he finishes this. Yeah, absolutely. The amount of detail and the attention to how everything's built is just fantastic. So you see these like little warships, these Viking warships, and you see the shields hanging off. And then on this one, you could see like these little pylons and like the little um wristband or whatever mm -hmm. where you put your arm through the shield. Like it's you brilliant. see that. The shields are just hanging off of that thing. So he's like, really understands. All of it's really sharp. I like seeing our Viking with those uh, Thor-like discs on Dude. his on his chest. Dude, I mean, you see the the you see the Thor helmet right mm -hmm. there. You know, maybe perhaps 
there's a couple more things that, that Kirby might have taken from uh, from the comic strips. For years, man. Oh yeah, you know what? There was there was a couple pieces. I might even see it in uh, this next volume. But there was some real Buscema kind of uh, seated poses. I just want to take a look through a couple of these, man, because I I feel like I found the hook to get people to click on to check out a Prince Valiant. They they should become aware of of these comics. Um, I would say that that the Hal Foster fastball, when it comes to this shit, like look at these battles, dude. It's shocking. That's insane. Like you can see where those seventy hours a week are. You do one of these pages a month or something like that. That would be an achievement. But to do one a week with such varying composition each time, full battles, color holds with fireballs, and and look at these crazy skies. This guy's amazing. I would say that the first three volumes would contain the fastball, the stuff, the stuff at, at that rigorous a level, and then he starts to come up with his codified language that is still very, very good. But he shoots his load a lot in these in these first ones, man. Like I was talking with Jeff Darrow recently, and we were talking about Valiant because I've been, just been on this tip. And he's talking about like like the more later ones. It's all Prince Valiant like looking and like surveying like oh that ca that castle is you know so far away and is so high and there's so many people like and just planning raids. This is another very famous sequence, and to just illustrate that like he's putting a lot in there and sometimes it's not even about the arc of the thing and you'll see what I mean. So he shows up at this the cave of time, and there's just this kind of witch lady in there sits with the witch lady she sends him off deeper into the cave this is an interesting bit and this this goes along with what you said about dave sim because in the first 20 some issues of uh of uh cerebus there is a guy who's like a master of time or something like that and the time is lettered like this as opposed to the typical dave sim so so that's that's one point in your favor there goes into the cave deeper, you see all of this bounty, you know, he's smogging, dude, and has, you know, all kinds of booty from people that he fucked over. But it's like, you know, it's Father Time is in this cave. The rendering on the Father Time is just really hard to believe. That Yeah, especially how do you rep re reproduce that into a comic page? Um, this is a fun sequence. So Father Time kind of like jumps on him. I just, I, I would love to see this animated, just like this like wispy, skinny gaunt fucking father time you see with each panel our uh prince valiant is getting older and crustier to the point where he like leaves and the witch kind of like just brings him back that's all that happened there's no fight with the old dude there's nothing and the only thing about this that matters is that now prince valiant knows what it is like to be old and crusty and to enjoy himself in the moment. Like that's that's what all that was for. So there's not some real big payoff or anything like that. It just was where his mind was at the time. He does so many spectacular examples of water. Like yeah. uh, that last one you were showing, there are waves crashing. Oh yeah. Which, you know, beautiful to look at, not fun to draw. Right. <laughs> not easy to draw at least. Yeah. And then you see waterfalls. We've seen the ships out on the open seas. It's really impressive. Look at the knowledge he has about like what is yeah, underneath the cool. lattice work and the shingles of roofs as the hun uh kind of uh start to descend upon this castle if this is a real build up with this story where like the hun are out there just fucking destroying the castle getting closer and closer to the heart and each night the people within the castle are enjoying their fruits of their you know meals and stuff they have everything they need the hun destroy the outer wall of a castle and then they realize there's an inner wall so it's like a slow build until the hun inevitably finally get in there and it it's all good because it's like they ate the last of their meals um but see they have such decadence you know caligula type shit and then when the hun finally come in there uh, there are definitely some like race stuff because it's like here you're your hun these fucking you know savages and stuff and then you got like your your aristocracy, your Anglo's fucking, you know, disappearing in a hatch. A gesture's a jester is a wild looking character design. It is. I think he shows up more. They we're gonna get a lot of a lot of stuff. I st I stole this in the uh, X Men Grand Design. Uh, you know what? Like speaking of cribs, let me show a crib. 
Okay, here it is, man. It's it's this panel right here that I stole. That's this right here. <laughs> if you could see that. Here, if you could put this book your way. So, this right here is this. Pretty subtle. Yeah. It's just such a good composition. Right. And, and this is a very... Um, this this image is has, is burned into my mind for for some reason. So so like when I needed my guy to get pounced, that was like an image that came to mind. But uh, there are these like lumbering seated figures that you could you've seen Buscema draw it a million times. I could go on and on, man, about this. I'm I'm having such a ball. What I was doing was re like this. Wow. Hey, that Buscema ish, man. Totally. Love that he throws something like this in too to really contrast what all is in that panel. Yeah. Big man, he he put these these panels are big. Like each one is almost like an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So fantastic. What I was doing before was I was reading a different strip book every every night before bed. Terry and the Pirates Tuesday, that type of stuff. Dick Tracy Wednesday. I got to a sweet spot in Prince Valiant that I'm like, you know, what? I'm just gonna be fucking Laurel Prince Valiant for a little while. I'm off that now, you know. Like uh, I'm I'm back on some other stuff and sprinkling it back in. But revisited this stuff. I showed off the Kirby Demons things on uh, online, and I was astonished yes. at the people that we know who didn't know that Kirby <laughs> piece. So, like, I hit you up. I'm like, dude, I think we take for granted, like, the stuff that, that we take as common knowledge. People don't always know that, man. And we have the Cartoonist Kayfabe platform to celebrate this stuff and show it off. Ain't no diss to Kirby whatsoever, uh, despite any kind of clickbait title. Uh, I have very little interest in hearing comments defending or yeah. dissing. I could care less what any armchair fucking fanboys have to say about that issue. Really, we're celebrating Prince Valiant today, man. And uh, without further ado, if you're good to go, I'm good to go. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Jimmy and I are going to be at Heroes Con uh, in a couple of weeks. Charlotte, North Carolina. Can't wait. We're going to have lots of good stuff for you. So come by the Cartoonist Cafe booth. We also are uh, going to be doing Cartoonist Cafe comic book Christmas in July again this year. It was such a big success last year. We're doing it again and probably going to do it for the foreseeable future. Last Saturday in July, we're calling all of you artists and comic book fans. Grab your comic book doubles. Grab the comics that you're happy to part with. Grab your comp copies that you got from your publisher if you are a cartoonist. We're going to spread those around like Johnny Appleseed around our, our cities and neighborhoods uh, to those free little lending libraries in your area. Uh, let's create bigger comic readership. That's an, that's an action item that we can do. And once a year, we do that in, in uh, at the end of this July. More readers are developing from that. How can they not? You know, especially if you're putting good stuff in, in those uh, boxes. But the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. So, Jimmy, can you please let the people know what you have out there? Street Angel Princess of Poverty is my next release. It'll be out from Image Comics later this year, collecting all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel Deadly Squirrel Live. Image just reprinted Street Angel Deadly Squirrel Live, so if you missed that the first time, pick it up now. Hulk Grand Design, the oversized Treasury Edition is available. Uh, in stores now with the fluorescent green cover so you can't miss it while supplies last. And The Plain Janes, the first young adult graphic novel. You can also join me on patreon.com slash jimrug and see my latest comics that I'm serializing there weekly. Big year 2023 for uh, for the Kayfabers, man. And uh, Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is going to be in stores in time for the holidays. I think it's coming out in October, so it gives you plenty of time to buy it and wrap it up for your uh, the hip hop fan in, in your life. 500 plus pages of comics collecting the four volumes of hip hop family tree that are out there 140 pages of new material including lots of artwork that i drew exclusively for this book please support the book you guys have been showing up in a big way in the pre-orders and i've gotten some feedback directly from the publisher from that so thank you very much uh we are going to be putting out X-Men Grand Design Trilogy uh, because uh, some of those books are out of print. This is going to be a complete trade paperback of all of my X-Men Grand Design uh, comics coming to you from Marvel Comics. Uh, same deal. Uh, and probably November, I think. So in time for the holidays, no doubt. And uh, Red Room is the comic that I'm working on now that's coming out right now on a regular basis. Uh, every month, new, new issue of Red Room. Issue 1 came out 
in uh, May. And this is the cover for uh, issue number two. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Each of these issues is self-contained, so if you see an issue, scoop it up, give it a shot. If you dig it, grab another one. Two trade paperbacks out there, Antisocial Network and uh, Red Room Trigger Warnings. Uh, what else do we have going on, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All great ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, Jimmy, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.